So right now I'm going to have Miss Vicky and Keelan and Patrick and Candace and their family come up to the stage real quick. Let's give it up for the Rankin family, everybody. So if you guys don't know, 17 years ago today, January 8, 2006, Pastor Pat officially became ordained as pastor of Have Bible, Will Travel. Now, before that, like Pastor Mark had said, he had been leading this church before that uh, for a few years and then uh, drywalling and doing all that and uh, pastoring the church. And then it finally be became official on January 8, 2006. The reason I brought the whole family up here is because Pastor Pat would be the first to tell you he wouldn't be able to do what he does without the support staff he has around him day in and day out, starting with Miss Vicky. Amen. That's why the Bible says that you need to have a suitable helper. Then there's a rumor out there. Don't always bring your kids to church. You'll wear them out and they'll never want to go to church again. Keelan Rankin here is a living example of exactly opposite of that. Amen. They took her to every event, every church, and she loves the Lord uh, with all of her heart and continues to grow and grow and grow and now is doing her, her own great things in the Lord's name. Amen. Amen. Then let's go over to Patrick and Candace and their family. The love that Pat and Vicki and everybody else in their family has has trickled down not only up to Mr. Rankin, who gave his life to the Lord and now serving the Lord and worshiping the Lord, but now Patrick and Candace, they raised their family in the Lord as well. And you can see it through their children, how they, they follow the Lord, they love the Lord. So if you and your family think it can't be done, it can be done. All you have to do, but here's the thing, you have to set the example and it starts at home. The reason that this family follows the Lord now is because they don't just do it on Sundays or Saturday nights. They do it 24-7, 365. Amen. So from all of us here at Have Bible, we wanted to thank you, Pastor Pat, for all your service and your wonderful family and setting the example. And like the Apostle Paul said, don't follow me because you want to follow me. Follow me because I follow Christ. And that's why we follow Pastor Pat. So we want to give you that. And God bless you and your family, and thank you guys for everything you. you do. God hey, get up, you. shake hands, and meet and greet one another. Happy New Year.
you in 2023, Father God. So please send the power of your Holy Spirit here today to be in the service. And we pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Applaud the Lord and wish your neighbor a happy new year. Tell them to sit down. Sit down. Isaiah 43, verse 15 through 19. You know, uh, Pastor Aaron covered a few things uh, about my family. And, uh, and uh, if, you, if you look at it as success, I do. It, it all comes from the Lord. Um, it, again, and if you were to interview Keelan, she would say, yeah, the Rankins definitely had a drug problem. Uh, we drug her every time the church... <laughs> We drug her to church every time. And if you've been in the ministry, I'll just tell you, and then I'll move on. It's okay to drag your kids to church. It, and and they, we never interviewed her to find out if she wanted to go or anything. Just bring them, and the word will get on them, and they grow up there on their own and all that. Amen? Uh, so if you have a drug problem like that, it's good. So drag your family. I am the Lord God, or I am the Lord your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Um, so in this, we're talking about the new year and new you. I titled this message, Pop the Clutch. So... Um, some of you guys have done that. You know, I never, I, I, when I titled this Pop the Clutch, I just meant it to, you know, kind of get the church going. But this is how I used to start some of my jalopies. And if anybody drove, there you go. There's three, somebody drove a hoopty and you're just like, you know what, you don't need to f put a starter in it. Just, you like almost don't, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't even like really need a battery when you. Just pop the clutch and it gets things moving. So here it is. Uh, Thus said the Lord, I'm in 16, uh, 43, 16, who makes a way in the sea and a path in a, in a mighty water. So this isn't just a message, uh, Pastor Mark, for the Israelites. It's, it's all those who follow the Lord. Um, uh, and he, and he, obviously here he's talking about the battle between uh, them and the Egyptians and how God intervened. Here's what he says. Who brings forth chariot and horse and army and warrior. They lie down and they cannot rise. They're extinguished and quenched like a wick. So right when their back was against the wall and they thought it was for sure the end, the Israelites, God parted the Red Sea. And, and, and when he did that, he let the Israelites pass through and then he crashed the water down on the enemy. And uh, I told the service before, maybe that's what God's going to do in your life is crush the enemy if you will uh, turn the battle over to him. Amen? Amen? Sometimes you guys are fighting things you shouldn't even be fighting. I mean, your back's against the wall and you don't have anywhere to go. Well, when you have no, don't have anywhere to go, God will part away for you and for your family. And, and it doesn't have, watch this, it doesn't have to make sense right now at all because let's be honest to Barry, some of our lives, I'm looking at some of the families here and uh, it's a, Laurel, it's a deal. But God can fix and make a way when there is no way. So don't try to make sense out of it because it it's just doesn't make sense sometimes. And you're like, how in the world could God part the sea so we could get through it? He'll part the sea if you'll be uh, diligent. Verse 18, remember not the former things. So here's where we go when we pop the clutch and we move into the new year. A resolution is a firm decision. That's what you need to make today. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. He said, man, I did all kinds of great things, and I parted the sea, and I did this and all that, and the wagon wheels were falling off and all that. He goes, but I can do even greater than that. And, and I didn't even know this was my ordination date at all. I went up to preach at Troy, and Pastor Aaron's up there. He's like, hey, it's uh, Pastor Pat something and all this. So, uh, and DeBerry's may have been there. But there's a lot of guys from Cross Keys that were there. When I got ordained, we were in a little bitty storefront, and I told you how small it was, didn't I? Ask me, say, how small was it? 
It was so small I had to go outside to change my mind. <laughs> I'll tell that forever because it. So when all these wonderful pastors of the, of the Lord laid their hands on me, it was at that moment that God gave me a, 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 a word from him to pastor this church. And then when we looked around, we got up and there was like 10 people there or 13 or 15 or whatever it was. And I never dreamed that we would have so many wonderful people at this church. And so it, it doesn't, none of that made sense to me probably any more than your life makes sense to you right now. And I think that's right when things are starting to get good. So take this word here that was written you know, 2,800 years ago and apply it to your life that God is able, say that with me, God is able to do amazing things in your life. But you'll have to be dedicated. Pastor Aaron kind of talked about that. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. You just say, you know what, if you look on your uh, bulletin there, it says, hey, to keep God first. I, I just wrote down three things. I said, pray, read your Bible, and be at church. I, three things I think I can do. Just, just pray, read your Bible, and be at church. Don't make it difficult, and, and if that's too much for you, pin it to your refrigerator because you frequent that often. Amen? I mean, I do. I figured you guys did as well. And I haven't, I haven't started the weight loss yet, but I'm ready to in a couple of days. Because, like, after Sunday, you're like, well, we're going to, after church, you got to go out. After church, you got to go out. And everywhere we go is based around food. Amen. Amen. You become holier when you do that. So remember not the things then. Those were great. Say that with me. All that was great. God did wonderful things. But 2023, oh, my gosh. It is going to be amazing what God is going to do in your life and my life when we do it together and keep God first. Uh in verse 19, it says, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. And just when you th didn't think things could get any wilder, God can create water in a desert. Turn with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll talk about this. Just two verses, and then we'll pray for your offering today. Um, but it is written, What no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart of a man imagine what God has prepared for those uh, who love him. So if you can think it or see it or imagine it in your heart, God has bigger things, Nolte, than that for you. But you go like, man, I can't believe, like, I can actually pay my bills. Look, uh, look. Remember that when you were like, man, I can't believe, like, we can pay the bills. I never, I never dreamed that we'd be able to pay our bills. And, and as you grow closer to the Lord and you continue to be sanctified, he'll make you wiser and things like that will start to happen. And next thing you know, you'll start doing other things. But you have to follow the commands of the Lord. Amen? And he's got big and great things for you and your family. So here's 10, last verse. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. Um, and... This is, close your eyes when you receive this. This is the Holy Ghost. Say that with me, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And it's the same spirit. It's the same, and I'll finish this. Keep your eyes closed. For the spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. So leave it there. The spirit is the spirit that was hovering over the waters in the beginning, as we knew the beginning. I, there was never a beginning for God, but for this existence that we live in. And the spirit raised Jesus from the dead, Elizabeth, and the spirit of God lives in each believer uh, here today. Amen? Okay, open up your eyes. So the spirit will get you and me to do things we normally wouldn't do, even if you're Baptist. It's, keep one foot on the floor and you can keep your card. <laughs> and it's weird when you preach the different... The, the word's the word regardless of where you take it. Whether I, If I take it to the city, I take it to the rural, I take it here in the county where... It's always the same. Now, sometimes in the cultures, the, the reply's a little different. So me and sis and, and mommy was at a person's house and the, he's a pastor and his family's a pastor and he's like... They're like, 
when you preach, do your people like respond back to you? I go, oh man, they stand on their heads. And he said, what would you call that? I said, I call it Baptocostal. <laughs> Applaud and I'll take a drink. So what I'm saying is, regardless of the denomination, after a while, Lamonis, when the spirit gets on you, it does things that you just can't imagine. You go, I can't believe you're shouting. I can't believe that you're dancing. I can't believe that you're happy. I can't believe that I can see the joy on your face finally. That's what God can do. God can open the eyes of the blind and heal people no matter what they got going on in their life. Let us pray. I, I'll just keep telling the stories if I don't. Lord, this year, you've already showed us that you're taking care of us big time. And we're excited about that. And we're excited that everybody's here and in Troy and North and all that. Lord, it's a wonderful thing. And we love you. We pray for the offering today, those who give um, and, and give with grateful hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So applaud the Lord and let the basket come back. Turn with me in John 15, and I'll tell you, we're going to get into a little bit of story time because it's kind of fun. Um, so if you look at me, I'll tell you something you're going to need to know before you're successful in 2023. Get rid of your negative thinking. Get rid, look at me, get rid of the negative people that are around you. Get rid of the negative people that are around you. Doesn't mean we're not friends. It just means I can't hang around you because, watch this. Life is tough enough as it is. Life's to, hey, if they ain't serving Jesus and they ain't sober and shouting Christ, love you, but we ain't running around together. So we're looking for this place, and I'll tell you this story. It just gets better and better. And it just, I got to tell you all this because I want to share, I want you to share in this with me. And we're looking for this place. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in Troy, Missouri, but there is just, there's a pile of people there. And it's hard to find buildings. And finding a hall there to rent is almost impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. So we end up finding this VFW hall uh, out in Troy. And it's just wonderful, just pristine. It's as clean as a hospital. The people out there obviously are veterans. They're wonderful. Uh, I believe they're born-again believers, and, and we found it. And we're shouting Jesus, and all the people showed up from all over the place. And we had such a great time out there. And I would have never believed that that many people would have been at church when it was snowing outside. You know how snow is now? People are like, hey, it's snowing. I mean, back when we was kids, the snow used to be up to here. And you're... You're to say tire chains and my dad my dad and his brothers used to argue about whose car would go better in the snow. And 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 if you didn't have chains, at least you had studded tires. Say that with me, studded tires. Oh yeah. And they had to be off after a certain date and all that, unless you was a teenager. Oh yeah, at nighttime we could put on a light show. Just spin them puppies. Uh, I don't know how I got to that story. <laughs> but get rid of the negative people. In your, anyways, God did amazing things. So would you applaud the Lord? And I want to thank him for <laughs> what he did out in Troy. It was awesome. Amen. So go to John 15. We're going to read 12 verses in here. For sure, the easiest reading and one of the best chapters in John. It is for sure. Love it. Uh, and if you're a new believer, don't worry about where to read. John is the place to go. It is a wealth of information, and it's very easy to understand. You know, when I first got saved, I read John for five years. Five years, over and over and over, because I couldn't comprehend what I was reading, because I, was, I wasn't a, I was, how do I say this? Um. Uh, I never made the honor roll. I never did. I don't think. And it was, I know, what does it take to be on the honor roll? Is it like 3.2? I was two points below 3.2. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. 
Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Uh, and every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Say this with me. It's painful, but it works. God is trying to cut some things back in your life that you don't need so you can be the person God's called you to be. And some of you guys are like, I can't imagine my life without that, or I can't imagine my life without that person, or imagine without this. God is trying to refine you. Sanctification is a process. Verse 3, already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me. That means to remain in God, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So here it is. If you don't remain on the vine, stay plugged in. Here you go. Uh, I just I put up three things. Prayer, read your Bible, and be at church. And there's many more ways you can stay close to the Lord. I just wanted to put up three because after like three, it's hard for me to count that number. Amen? Pray, read your Bible, and be at church. So here it is. Verse 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I'm in him, it is he that bears, say it with me class, bears much fruit. So we know if somebody's a Christian by the fruit that they bear. Now some of them are head scratchers, but we don't want them to be secret agent Christians. We ask me, say, what's a secret agent Christian? Where you, you have to ask them, you're like, are you a Christian? I call that a secret agent, Chris. I go, I didn't. I seen you. You fill in the blank. It fell on you. Uh, this one's not so funny. Verse 6, it says, If anyone does not abide in me, he's thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branch are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. Somebody say, Oh, me, and I'll preach. Here's the problem with hell it was never created for humans, it was created for demons. And if you ever. These people that make it to hell, you don't die, you burn. Let me say it again. You don't die, you burn forever. Tell me if you ever put your hand over a candle. I mean, I mean somebody that was really tuned up one night. God, there's only like two honest people in the whole church. I mean, really super. I mean, like you've been up for two days. You're like, oh, man, I can hold my hand over that fire. Ow, oh, that hurt. <laughs> Hell's worse. Look at me when I see this one. When you're a young kid barefooted walking over an asphalt parking lot, knowing that the grass can't get there soon enough. <laughs> Tell your look at your neighbor and say, that's hot. <laughs> Hell's hotter. Amen. Hell's hotter. We don't want to be there, and we don't want our family to go there, so we're going to tell them about the gospel. Verse 8, by this my Father is glorified uh, that you bear much fruit, so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Stop, I got one more verse. Close your eyes. If your joy tank is a little low and you haven't had any real joy in your life, just raise your hand. I'll pray for you right now before we move on in the service. Father God, for the hand that's raised, I pray you restore the joy, uh, Lord God, uh, that they need, each one, without being complicated, Lord. The, the joy of their salvation will well back up. Fill them to the top so they can be strong in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now look at me. God will do it. Amen. God will do it. So when it starts to fill back up and you start to shout, you can tell your neighbor that God, and what you celebrate, you get more of. So if God's doing something in your life, man, tell somebody about it, and God will give you a little more. He's not going to give you any more unless you do with what, what he wants you to do with the first thing. Amen? amen? And if your life's not moving, go back to the first thing he told you to do before you try the second one. This is my commandment. I'm in verse 12, and then we'll move on. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. It hurt. 
Some people are hard to love. I'm going to say that three times. Say it with me. One, two, three. Some people. One more. Some. It doesn't matter if they're hard to love. God's called you to love them anyways. Because you were loved even when you weren't so wonderful the way you are now. I mean, it's like when we get saved, we get to church, we're like, oh, man, I've, I've reached the apex. No, that just means you're saved. Now the work starts. And being in the human being business, that's kind of rough, isn't it? Because human beings bring their stuff. And then when we all meet together, God calls it his church. So it ain't your job to wag your finger, look down your nose at somebody else in their sin. God will do that for you. Amen. He's called us to catch him. He'll clean him. He wants us to be fishers of men, not keepers of the aquarium. I got more if you want me to. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. And this is Paul's resolution. New Year's resolution, the firm decision. Go up to 3-7 and we'll, we'll plug it in. And how did I extract that little chunk out of chapter 3? I have no idea. It surely had to be the Lord. And it comes with a story at the end. So be ready. And then we got a wonderful two-minute testimony when I get done. We'll be here for just a minute. Um, so if you have anybody at home that isn't saved, text them right now and say, Pastor Pat's going to lead you uh, to Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit and God's Word. I, I know it because I preach this message down at Cowboy Church uh, with Pastor Aaron on Wednesday night. And a guy got saved when I was done preaching. I, I want to let you know it's the same word in the rural areas, and I told you in the county and the city. Amen. So all you got to do is take it there, get it on the people, and it's uh, Mrs. Strain, it's like a sticky trap. Uh, they could all relate to a sticky trap. Um, so here it is. Here's Paul's declara uh, declaration or his resolution. Well, whatever gain I had, so what he's doing is he's kind of giving his resume. No matter how many trophies I had on the wall, no matter what I did, all my accolades, all my certificates, all the help that I've given people, that's how he's kind of setting this up. Listen to this. He actually goes on a very detailed discourse here. Um, I count as a loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and say this with me, class, and count them as... It doesn't mean that God's not excited that you've accomplished a lot of things. But if you think you're impressing God, you're not, you're not impressing God. The only way you can impress God is to be more like him and love his people. Amen. And you're, all your accolades are wonderful, but they're nothing. The Apostle Paul, let's just be honest, possibly the greatest author to ever put pen to paper. He said, all the things that I've done, I count as rubbish. Thirteen books in the New Testament, and you can argue uh, when we get to heaven if he wrote Hebrews or not. Because there's a lot of, you know. In order that I might gain Christ... And be found in him not having a righteousness of my own. He said, I'm not talking that I got my righteousness on my own by doing good works. He'll tell you here in a minute. He said, I got it through faith. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes through the law or keeping the law or, or going to church. I told the, the guys down at the cowboy church, I said, it, it don't make you a, a Christian just being at church. Any more than putting on a hat makes you a cowboy. But that which comes through faith in Christ Jesus, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. So remember, faith is being sure of what we hope for and the evidence of things not seen. So you can't see faith. You can't touch it. If you could, it wouldn't be faith. So you have to take it today that this word that, that God has wrote is powerful enough to change your life, my life, and do it right now. That I might know him, verse 10, that I may know him in the powers of, of his resurrection. So out of all this stuff, Paul said, I want to know more about the power of his resurrection. And may share, and share in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. 
So your goal is to be more like Christ in his death? That wouldn't preach too well in the Western world now because we're too worried about our creature comforts. If it rains, we don't want to go to church. If it snows, we don't want to go to church. If it's hot outside, we want to go to tent revival. You want me to keep going? And they didn't have any coffee today, by the way. Paul says, I want to be more like Jesus in his death. Jesus went through the whole gamut, persecuted, humiliated, beat unmanlike. And the apostle Paul said, I want to know about that type of lifestyle. I'll tell you what, in the Western world, we've got so comfy now, if it doesn't come within seconds, uh, we get disgruntled about it, don't we? You ever been like, I just got to say this, like you're at a stop, stop light? There's nothing, I mean, it's like the world's going to come to an end if the guy in front of you doesn't get going. Just look, look at me, don't look away. Man, I ain't got like I ain't got two seconds to wait. He better get he better get going. And then you guys don't do it, but other drivers do. They go then if they get an oh, if I get an opening. <laughs> Scott, if I get an opening, I'll tell you how fast. Oh, I'll go around. I got a V8 in this puppy. I'll burn right around you, and then you're gonna look at me. I mean, V8. And then you know what happens? You meet him at the next light, and he goes, I'm going to mow your lawn right now. Hold on. This happened. I'm not going to name who it was. When I leave here, I go to North. And there's a pile of people that go to North. But they got to get there too, buddy. And I'm just kind of cruising along like any preacher would. I'm drinking my coffee or talking on my phone with somebody's like, go behind me. You hurry up. You in your little red car. And the moment they swerve around me at the light right there at Melanfi. And then they pull into my church. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> Clap a little bit and I'll get a drink. Hallelujah. But you know something? I don't love anybody indifferent because of that stuff. Because that's the human nature. And, and whether you know it or not, we want to be first. Because that's the most important thing on our list is to be first. Oh, yeah. Looking pretty good today, too. I hope, so. I hope they see this outfit. <laughs> Say that with me. I hope they see this outfit. It's new. I got a new shirt here. Amen. You know, I got to move on, man. This is start to get personal here. Three, two more, three more verses. <laughs> oh, Lord. Verse 12, here we go. This is where it gets interesting. Not that I've already obtained this. So we talked about the resurrection of the dead, which I, I, I wish I could pray that prayer. But I'll be real honest with you. I don't know that I could pray that prayer. Where you go, I want to know, Bruce, about Christ's pain and the way he lived at the end and all that. I don't know. DeBerry's probably prayed it because he's holier than me. But I got enough pain in my life. I'll just be real honest with you. But the Apostle Paul goes, yeah, and the Apostle Paul's already been shipwrecked, beat, stoned, left outside the city and the whole deal. And he said, I still want to know about Christ and his, and his death. Not that I've already obtained this verse 12, so here it is. Here's his resolution. Obtained this, or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do, rise with me, one thing I do. And you can kind of put your finger up at this moment if you want. This could be like a 2023 moment. Oh, Chuck, you got to listen to this. This gets juicy. Watch this, and I'll just hold my finger up. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his, his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, 
and straining toward lights ahead. So no matter, and I'll bring uh, Carol up. So listen to this. It doesn't matter, Cherry, what they said about you. It don't matter what you did in 2022 or you had an oopsie or you, you cussed or you. As a Christian, sometimes you're still a Christian, but you still like to act out a little bit. Just, uh, just say this with me. I'd like to give him a piece of my mind. Oh, I get it. Because we would too. But I wouldn't be the ambassador for Christ. The way I need to be to shepherd this church if I responded to every time somebody makes a slam on me or my church or my family. I can't do it. It's not going to happen. You ain't going to watch this class. You ain't going to bait me into that fight because it ain't my fight. I'm just a spokesperson for the Lord. God handles my fighting. You don't need to respond to every time somebody acts stupid. Stupid is as stupid does. Write that down, hashtag somewhere. So I'm not plagued, Pastor Mark, by whatever it used to be. But I strain on towards the prize. The prize is Jesus. That's where I'm trying to take my family. And they'll be the first day if you were to interview him today, you say, Dad or Grandpa, something, he's pretty, 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 I'm pretty strict, they would say. He's, stri he's a strict guy, very strict about my life and the way we live our lives at our house, very strict. But watch this, I'm okay with it. I sleep pretty good at night. And you can too, but you'll have to forget about what you did in the past and strain towards what God has for you and your family. Don't try to be the popular person, Ken, at your house. Don't try to be the popular person. Don't try to be the people pleaser. Don't try to be your kid's pal. Or if you have grandkids, don't try to be Be their grandparents. Then it ends like this. I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So I say all that to say this. I was uh, at Cowboy Church down there, so you, here's how Cowboy Church works. They asked me to come down and preach down there, which is the highest of all honors. When anybody asks me to do a preaching, or, and I'm blessed. I get, I get a lot of opportunities. And it's only because of God. Only because of God. I'm just the voice box. And I, and I go when I can. I, I, I try not to turn anything down. but So I get, I get down there, and it's a long drive, and it's, it's this, that, and the other. But I go because that's where God's called me. It's a long drive. It's 250 miles one way. But in, uh, to be part of this down there, when we first started, when me and Pastor Aaron didn't have a trailer, we would drive down there, and then we'd drive back that night. That would be 500 and some odd miles in, in a day. 17, 18 hour day and then coming to work and all that. That's okay. I'm a big boy. I don't need to sleep like a little baby. I don't, I, don't need a, I don't need a diaper and I don't need a blankie and I don't suck my thumb anymore. If you're working for the Lord, I promise you, you will lose a lot of sleep. So I'm in the middle of this cowboy church and I'm preaching this identical message. And then when you ask the cowboys to pray, it is silent. They, they are so Reverend, They're the most wonderful people in the world. They wave the flag down there, and they still love Jesus down there. It is, it is a, it's, a, it's wonderful. But as I started speaking about the Lord, I started to move around a little bit. You ever been at that church before? You go, go. yeah. Maybe you've just a nod. And then they started to get a little vocal. And, yeah, amen. I said, how many of you people would like to be saved today? And I'm preaching on, and then a guy right behind me 
starts to put his hand up. And you can turn the house lights down so I can hold my hand up here so you can see this. This is the international burger. This is the international sign of surrender. Chef, this just means I've given up. And whether you're a cowboy, a police officer, a computer person, whoever it is, truck driver, all over the world, when you raise your hands, God knows exactly what it is you want to do. You want to surrender your life, and then you want to ask him to come in and transform you and make everything new. Now, after this guy got saved, I'm not going to air out all the business, but the guy that owns the place, Brian, he's a good friend of ours. He said, man, there ain't been anybody been saved here in so long. And we are so glad that you came down. I'm just glad that he had the barn open so I had a place to preach. And he was just glad that I could make it down there so we could get this thing done. So there's a lot of things that are resting on your shoulder today. And you need to look at your neighbor right now and say, don't quit. Because you're going to need each other. And I had no idea who this, I didn't even know who this guy is. How am I, how am I going to know who somebody is 250 miles from me? I never even met him before. But I started that relationship with him five or six years ago. And maybe when I wrote in, he didn't even know I was a Christian. And I don't think, I, I can't recall that it, he ever asked me if I was a Christian, really. But maybe by the way I handled myself, church, he probably said, man, I'm going to ask that guy to preach down here one time. And that's all you need as a Christian is an opportunity to bring this into somebody's life. It may take one year, two years, or it may take one day. But God has to know that you ain't going to quit. So I'm going to do the same thing I did down there at Cowboy Church. Same thing, same God, same spirit, same word, same chapter. And I'm going to ask you this question right now. Have you been saved by the grace of God and the work that his son did at the cross of Calvary? Have you been saved? Let's close our eyes for just a second. And maybe you'll be just like that cowboy that was standing from behind me. You say, that's me, Pastor Pat. I finally ran into this, this barn, this sanctuary you have here at Westport. And I'd like to give my heart to you, dear Jesus. Just raise your hand and I'm going to pray for you right where you are. You don't even got to move. You ain't even got to come here. Just I'm going to pray for that person and that person right there. Right now. There's people who got their hand up. Don't need to look. I'm just going to pray for them. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. Church, I said in the mighty name of Jesus. You still save souls. In the rural, in the city, in the county, and all across the globe. And these people today who have their hand raised. Have submitted and given up. And want you to come into their life. And that's a wonderful thing. And maybe not just in the sanctuary, but the sanctuary at their home today. Or the sanctuary in the hospital. Or the sanctuary inside their pickup truck while they're watching this broadcast. Stretch out your other hand, friend, and say, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. I want to be a born-again believer. And now, dear God, I want you to help me live for you oh I see those hands and I want you to know so. <laughs> those hands that are up today some of those hands we've been praying for that person you don't even know it but I've been praying for you, do you Keith do you see the power of prayer it goes out yonder I think this is the most people I've seen giving their life to Jesus in, in a long time. 
Oh, it's a wonderful thing to be saved. Watch this now, Mark. This is this where this is where we got to get rid of the white knuckle and we're going Man, I woo! Now it's time to sling a leg over it. I got to let go of this I got to let go of this pew, this chair in front of me, man, because this is, it's like a blankie. I'm going to hide behind it. Not anymore. I've given my life to Christ. And all I'm going to ask you to do is be bold. I'll stay right here with you, and I won't embarrass you. I promise I won't embarrass you. I just want to be able to, to pray for you. Listen very carefully. Don't let the devil steal this moment. If you genuinely gave your life to Jesus today, I want you, and you can bring your friend with you. If, it's, if he's standing next to you, she's standing next to you. One, two, three, come out. Boom, right out there. Come on. There you go. I see you right there. Come on down. Somebody ought to start applauding right here. We're not going to bear. I'm just going to pray for these people and uh, and I'll just I'm a, I'll generalize this that way it, it, so some of these people that are at the altar I've been praying for for a while I've been praying for physical healing for them I've been praying for spiritual healing for them I've been partnering my faith with some of the people that are standing here for these people who are before us prayer works Oh, Mrs. Chittenden, it it is it, it it's a it's a it's a it's a demon slayer. Prayer's a demon slayer, and we don't have to do this. We don't do any of this stuff at church with hate. We do it with love. Hate don't work. Everything's got to be done in love and for the love of God. We don't. God doesn't want anybody going to hell. For heaven's sakes. We're going to do something powerful here in 2023 because I believe what you celebrate, you get more of. So what we're going to do is we're going to invite, and I want to have Anna up here to, to just kind of walk around. And if you need to get some information from these people, that's good if they want to give it. So we can be praying for them. That's, that's important. Um, we're going to have the rest of the church come down and just stand behind them. That means everybody because it's a celebration. And, and, and I'll be real honest with you. You know, a lot of times pastors get attention all the time, and that's wonderful and everything. I'm, I'm one part of the body of Christ. I'm just the voice box. You guys are the foot soldiers and the workers. This is what the body of Christ looks like when people get saved. And that's basically really why we're here is that people get introduced into the kingdom. Because you, you've been saved, and once you got saved, you go, man, I want to share this with everybody. And it's never too late to be saved. I'm going to pray for you now, and I just, see, there's, there's no devil in hell that can stop what God is doing. Amen. Let's pray together. Father God, you've done another miracle, just like you did in that little barn down in Republic, Missouri. It was the same message and the same author, same spirit. Father God, it's the same spirit that was hovering over the Lord. It's the same spirit that, that ushered through the sanctuary and through the roof and, and touched a life. Amen. And transformed a heart and got him to be brave and powerful. I thank you that I could celebrate this spiritual birthday with them today. And we give you all the glory, Father God, for the power of the Holy Ghost to be released in here. We could celebrate their spiritual first birthday today. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen.